While it looks like NECA's left a little something extra in the oven. Here's your look at the brand new NECA Toys Thanksgiving Retro Cloth John Carver action figure. This year, there'll be no leftovers. A masked killer terrorizes Plymouth, Massachusetts in this Eli Roth-directed horror flick that originated from a trailer in the film Grindhouse. This 8-inch Thanksgiving John Carver action figure is fully articulated and features tailored fabric jumpsuit, two interchangeable masks, removable hat, axe, meat tenderizer, and knife. Comes in a window box packaging. Before we see what new Carver NECA has cooked up for us, let's grab the tape measure and see how tall the figure stands. Now, like the one that we looked at before, the ultimate release, I do have the figure right now displayed with his hat on. You could remove the hat, but I like to kind of keep it on the figure, so I'm going to measure him based on that. If you'd like to have the hat removed, obviously just be a little bit shorter of a figure. With that in mind, though, John Carver, the retro cloth release, actually stands 8.5 inches in height, or the figure is 21 centimeters tall. It feels like last week when we looked at the ultimate John Carver, probably because it was last week when we looked at the figure. A little late on the game when it comes to my reviewing, at least, of the figure. Uh, the one I actually ordered online from NECA's site, the Retro Cloth release, at least. I don't know what's happening with the ultimate version I also ordered as well. But the Retro Cloth actually arrived to my doorstep shortly a week after I posted the review of the ultimate John. Uh, another figure, obviously, like we had done before when we looked at the ultimate version of Carver. I can also bring in the Retro Cloth release of the Miner from My Bloody Valentine about the same size of figure. Obviously, Carver's getting a little bit higher of a height just because of the hat he's got on top of his head. A rather interesting thing I did notice about the Retro Miner. Remind me, I'll bring him in a little bit later. First, though, let's look at the accessories that come include with John Carver here. Now, unlike the Ultimate release, that would have come with a lot more. Retro's release of him only comes include with six accessories. What is not included with this release is that he doesn't come with the musket, the dart gun, the sledgehammer, or the alternate bloody mask. He does come still with the oven-melted mask, but he doesn't come with all those other things. And that usually, again, is the case with retro figures. You usually get, if anything, one or two things that come with the cloth versions, and you get a lot more accessories to come include with the Ultimate releases. So let's look at the things that come include with Carver. First, he comes with a pair of swappable hands. Now, these hands may just look like the hands that he already has on the ends of his forearms, and you wouldn't be necessarily 100% wrong. You'd be pretty close to wrong, but not 100%. I did notice that with these hands, they're a little bit better for holding like the meat tenderizer. If you try your best to try to get this meat tenderizer into these hands, I find they just sit way too loose. And that's probably one of the reasons why they included these extra hands. I mean, again, like they're not that much different really than the hands that he already has, but again, they're just better suited for holding slightly smaller accessories. By the way, they are mirror flips, so you have a slightly wider grip hand that's actually just the mirror flip to this one over here and it's in case of just popping off the hand that he has on the other forearm and just replace it with those the figure also comes included with a knife now oh actually you know what by the way seeing as we were talking about the tenderizer let's just quickly look at that don't want to jump right away to the knife the tenderizer has been molded again here in brown plastic i'm going to try to bring my do my best to bring in the other ones here. I, I, I like, on, honestly, the color, I think, for the brown more on the retro cloth release than I did with the Ultimate. The Ultimate kind of went more the red of a paler brown. I have to go back and look at this original movie, obviously, as source material. But I do kind of like the brown, I think, a little bit more on the retro cloth release, whether it's movie accurate or not. Obviously, it's also going to be a little bit smaller in size, the Ultimate is, to the retro cloth release. They're always going to be a little bit bigger because the figures are also a little bit bigger. Like that SCTV clip. The man, the bigger man gets the bigger pork chop. Anybody see that clip from SCTV? Let me know down below. Uh, the figure also comes included with a knife. Now, again, like the Ultimate release, we don't get the slightly smaller knife, but it does come included with, like, the butcher knife. This is the longer one that's going to come included with the retro release. The smaller one's going to come with the Ultimate version of Carver, if I don't drop it in the process. Very similar type of knives, although the one we get with the retro is a lot shinier of a silver. The figure also comes included with this axe. Bringing the axe from the ultimate release again, bigger man gets the bigger pork chop. Also, to note as well, like the blade doesn't seem as dirty as it does on the ultimate release. I will say, though, I like the, the way they've painted the Ultimate a little bit more. You can see more of the grain. It's also a, a slightly lighter coloring of wood. Uh, this one also does have a little bit more of sculpting. So while maybe this one doesn't have as much sculpting, it certainly does paint a lot nicer. Again, this is going to be the one that's going to go with the Retro Cloth release. And again, all these can be held in his hands. The hands that he has right now are more than enough suitable for holding things like his axe. You don't really have to worry about even changing out the hands in the first place. The hands, by the way, are also very soft and plastic. So getting them in his hands, even though it looks like I'm probably struggling with it right now, it's pretty easy to do. You get them right in his hand. The figure also comes included with his melted mask. Now, without giving away anything to anyone that hasn't yet seen the movie, I'll just say this. The killer puts the mask down on an oven, and then the mask proceeds to melt. 
I mean, that's not saying necessarily anything that happened in the movie. But what I will say, though, is it's slightly different from the one that we get with the Ultimate release. The Ultimate does handle things, I think, paint-wise a little bit better, adding a much-appreciated darker coloring of a wash of brown, whereas the one for the Retro Cloth release doesn't have as much of it. Notably as well, I would say like the yellows are a little bit more richer on the Retro release. And you can see, like again, like this is a much brighter yellow, but I like the use of the brown a lot more on the Ultimate release. They also peg in place the exact same way. If you already have the Ultimate version of Carver, they'll plug in the exact same way. So there's a little slot of plastic on the back. You're just going to essentially take the head off, pop and remove that from the face. And then you're just going to replace it with this head sculpt here. Just before we do that, though, let's go ahead and remove the axe out of his hand. Just put it off to the side here. Getting a closer look at his defaulted head. And again, for this, it's probably best to bring in the original Ultimate release so you guys can see. Yeah, again, like in this case, the yellows are a little bit lighter. I will say one thing that the Retro does a little bit better. Maybe I like the coloring of the yellow a little bit more on the Ultimate, but I will say like his features stand a little bit better, I feel, on the Retro release. Is that the case? Do you guys agree? Let me know down below. He also has more rosier cheeks on the Retro release than he did on the original Ultimate. The Ultimate doesn't even really give much of an indication at all that he has blushing. This one, I think, does the features a little bit nicer, a little bit sharper also as well. The hats, if you look at the two, this one is a little bit, well, not, not as wide, but it does seem like a little bit higher. This one also handles the buckle a little bit brighter. But the head sculpts, though, very similar, but colored a little bit differently. I did say, though, that uh, changing out the heads would be exactly the same. It's just a case, again, rem removing the hat, which I will say, like, the hat is a softer plastic than that of the Ultimate release. Uh, it also fits over top of his head pretty much the exact same way. You're just going to kind of force that down on friction, and the hat's not going to be going anywhere. But to remove the hat, what's rather interesting, again, remember I was saying something, did anybody remind me? Nobody remind me. All shame on you. I did say bring back in the miner. Nobody did remind me, though. I'm going to bring him back in in a second. But the way he attaches is plugged in the exact same way. When we looked at the original John Carver, I'm just going to put the figure down here for a second. I'm going to bring back in the ultimate. I'm just going to remove the hat on him. I'm going to also as well remove the mask. Now, if you already had, and you've also seen the review, thank you for that, by the way. But if you had the original Ultimate Miner from My Bloody Valentine, he has exactly the same face. We've covered that territory, I know, already. Except this has the very ugly slot in the middle of his forehead to accommodate, again, the swapping of the heads. So again, if you wanted to just change the heads, I already had the clean mask before, but you want to put on the melted mask, just plugs in place like that. And again, the Ultimate My Bloody Valentine Miner also did things the exact same way. The interesting thing about it, though, is while looking now at the Retro Cloth release, it attaches the exact same way. You're just going to remove the head from, well, first of all, there's the mask. You guys want to see the mask, what it looks like up close and personal. A breathing spot, so of course the killer can breathe out of his mouth while he's chasing down people. And of course there's holes in his eyes there. Plugs in back the exact same way. But removing it, you can also notice as well that there's a face underneath. Now, thinking this was just a case that they scaled up the version of the Ultimate Miner, I happened to go back, though, and I looked at the Retro Miner. You guys can look along with me. This one didn't have a removable mask, nor did it have a removable miner's hat. But what it did, though, have, while it may not be as obvious on this side, if you look on this side of the figure's body, see there's a little opening right here where just the mask hasn't completely wrapped around the side of his face. There seems to be an opening on his face, if you look at the side here, right here, right around here. So if I'm covering this with basically the mask, See how it's got the little opening on the side of where his mask would be? Almost as if at one point, NECA had planned to have this as a removable mask. And maybe they just decided it was just too much, just too much additional tooling, obviously, that it just wouldn't have worked from them at least to do it in that, but to do it maybe in the ultimate release. So maybe this figure did in fact use at one point the unmasked surprised face and then just they, they couldn't get the mask off. They just kept it as one piece to the figure's head because like this one doesn't remove it, you know, don't want to be ripping it off and breaking it. It's interesting, though, that on the side of it, it does clearly look like he's got himself the ski mask underneath. Just, again, you can't remove the mask. I'm going to move that off to the side. By the way, if you guys did want to see the review of that retro cloth version of my Bloody Design Valentine my, uh, Minor, uh, I'll thank you in advance. Uh, by the way, changing out, the, again, the faces, just in case if you look at the back of the face, there's the little slot in the back of his mask, and that just plugs in place exactly the same way as the Ultimate version. And then, of course, you just would go back and retrieve put the little hat back in place. Now it's going to stay in place. And and again, like you can have the look of the character in two different ways. Either you prefer to have the melted mask or if again, you want to have the cleaner mask. I got to say like the cleaner mask does actually look really nice. I love the way again, they brushed, they blushed on the little uh, red down below there in the areas of his cheeks. Definitely does look again, not as not as painted well as the ultimate, but I think that the features look a lot nicer on the retro version. Just my own personal opinion. I just move the other ultimate 
carver out of the way here. Uh, when it comes to, of course, the rest of his body, the body is basically just using the same kind of coveralls as we get already from like the Michael Myers. I should have really brought in a retro Michael Myers. I've done already enough reviews of those guys, but basically like the coveralls seem to be exactly the same. Uh, they Velcro also the exact same way. And one thing too, is when you open up the coveralls, you'll notice that, yeah, unfortunately some of the staining from this, the dye that they probably used to color the coveralls would have bled then onto his body. I mean, this is never going to be a look that you probably, would you ever really display Carver with his shirt or his, his boilers basically open like this? I don't, I don't think you would, but you can see like, if you did though, it would leave a very noticeable stain on the actual plastic. Just one of those unavoidable things. Interesting also that his collar piece that goes around his head is actually only stops right around here. Instead of actually having this just cast in all black plastic, which I really expected them to actually do, they rather instead actually just cast this in, in flesh colored plastic. And probably one of the reasons why they did that too is that Car Carver isn't going to have black sleeves, for example. He would have only just been wearing gloves. So they probably just decided to cast the whole thing in, in skin color plastic, just because, again, things like visible forearms would also be there, and as well his visible legs. His feet are also very similar to the ones he would have had in the movie, kind of more like like hiking boots, hiking shoes, very nicely sculpted on the bottom. Unfortunately, not being completely flat, though, he, has, he doesn't have as much... Uh, stability as maybe like the ultimate miner we looked at before like miners if you look at the back the bottoms of his feet are actually completely flat so like his like the ultimate version of carver doesn't have completely flat feet so he doesn't balance as well now for the figure's articulation going back to his head it's gonna be on a ball joint so it does rotate all the way around not only is it on ball joint it seems like so like all this basically is one encased piece so like there's a ball joint here but i feel as if there's probably like a, a dumbbell so there's probably a ball joint here and a ball joint at the base of the neck because there seems to be a lot more movement even though he really loses a lot of it here not having it in the head he seems to gain a lot more of it in the neck the upper torso is also going to be on a ball joint. Now, these are using the newer retro figure bodies. He also had the notable ankle pivot, which is also good to see. Arms hinge out at 90 degrees. You can take Carver's arms and move them forward. You can move them back. Figure has a bicep swivel, double hinge on the elbow, which is also something new with the retro bodies. Swivel on the hands. Uh, the legs do split out. You can take the legs and move forward, move them back. There's a swivel at the top of the thigh. Double, a single hinge actually only on the knee. I keep thinking there's a double hinge, but I think there's only just a single hinge because I can only feel really in there. You know what? Let's just bring up the leg. Bring up the leg. Yeah, single hinge. Still some staining, but again, you're probably not going to have them waiting, waiting around, waiting around in the waters. But he only has a single hinge there. And the most important thing to take away from this is the fact that figure also has an ankle pivot and an ankle rocker. Love that new retro figures all have ankle rockers. That's the thing that was really lacking, I feel, on the original retro figures was they didn't have the ankle pivot. So a lot of times you'd have figures that would have a harder time to stand. Let's bring back in the ultimate version of John Carver. You know, again, it's so funny, the fact that I waited as long as I did to finally having a look at the ultimate release, like last week. If I'm dating myself at the time that you guys would be seeing this video, and at the time that I'm actually shooting this video, it was last week when I posted the review, finally, of Ultimate John Carver. Love the look of that figure. I love the movie. So, like, getting a Carver figure from NECA Toys just seems like hand-in-hand, -hand, perfect marriage. But now getting an ultimate release of the figure, I mean, if you are one that likes to collect retro figures, and I know that's not everybody, there are NECA collectors out there that only primarily collect retro figures, but then there's a lot of collectors that also just prefer the, the ultimate releases. I'm glad to see that NECA decided to release him in both formats. As a, as a collector that likes to collect both, I get the benefit of having the John Carver in the retro cloth release displayed with all the other holiday horror slashers, like my bloody, my bloody Valentine's minor. We also can, I can now have him display with the Michael Myers and something that the ultimate release can't say that he has. I can now also display him with Billy and Ricky from Silent Night, Deadly Night. Retro's John Carver may not have the same accessory count as the Ultimate release, not having, say, for example, the musket, the sledgehammer, the dart gun, or even the bloodied mask. But you know, to be fair, he does pretty good for himself. Retro cloth figures count your blessings if we get two or three accessories. John Carver happens to come in clue with six. He has the knife, for example, the meat tenderizer, the axe that he's got displayed with right now, and two, again, different interchangeable masks. You can either go with the cleaner mask, which, again, I think the mask is better defined. It seems to show the features a little bit nicer here on the retro cloth release than it did on the ultimate the ultimate i think did have better paint but i think the retro cloth figure had a better looking mask the masks though do change out the exact same way and when we did look at the ultimate version of john carver we realized that they are using yes the same head sculpt as the my bloody valentine minor and that's not a bad thing at all but you know pulling the mask off this one i was pleasantly surprised to go back and look at my bloody valentine's retro minor 
and realize perhaps there was a suggested idea down the road at one point. Maybe NECA had planned to have removable mask on that figure and decided to scrap it. I mean, it's more just speculation than anything else. But you have to wonder, though, if the mask isn't just a scaled up version from the one we got from the Ultimate Miner. But in fact, if the My Bloody Valentine Retro Miner had the original surprise look before the Ultimate got it. Makes you really certainly wonder. Are you guys a big fan of retro cloth figures? Let me know down below in the comments section. I know it certainly does draw the line when it comes to people that collect NECA figures. You either really like retro cloth figures or you don't, and you're just kind of more in favor of ultimate figures. Or you might just be like myself that likes to collect both formats. I, I will, again, like the idea that this one can now finally be displayed with some retro cloth figures that have yet to make ultimate releases. I'm looking right now in the direction of Billy Caldwell, Billy Chapman, and Ricky Caldwell. Two retro cloth figures. I do hope at some point we get finally as ultimate releases. But what do you guys think? What, where do you guys stand when it comes to retro cloth figures? Do you like them? Do you like to collect them? Or do you prefer just to stick with the ultimate releases? Let me know down below in the comments section. As of right now, retro cloth John Carver from Thanksgiving is available in stores or online. I ordered this one. I actually pre-ordered this one over at NECA's site. And again, the irony in all that is the fact that while you may have waited a while for the review to go up of the ultimate release from the person behind the camera... You didn't have to wait as long to get this the review of the Retro Cloth release. But what do you guys think of the figure? Let me know. If you guys also as well enjoyed the video, want to throw it a like. If you guys are loving the content you guys are seeing and you're on board to see more NECA reviews, hey, hey, you're in luck. I got actually a, a pile over here we're going to be getting through in the next couple of videos, the next couple of weeks. So make sure you're coming back here, obviously, on a regular basis. As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.